Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about how I have modded my Tyrannus radio to make it more fun to play this thing here. This is the FPV combat system. I've got a couple of videos on it now. In fact, I'll put a link to the little playlist down below. And it is Laser Quest for FPV. It doesn't have to be on a plane, it could be on quads, cars, tanks, could be on anything. And the issue that I've been having is that I have set up my momentary switch on the radio to activate uh, the firing of the FPV combat system on this particular model. Now, I always seem to move my thumb when I do that, uh, and particularly when the adrenaline is flowing and we're having a, uh, fun, uh, I always tend to kind of push my plane out of position. So what I really need to be able to do is to have a trigger button on the back of the radio where my kind of index finger naturally sits anyway. And as a kind of a, you know, a gamer, that's kind of where my trigger button is. I need to have a button there. So when I've got somebody in the crosshairs, I can push that button and fire. The cool thing is this is really easy to do with the Tronus. So let me show you the steps I've gone through. Uh, there's only a handful of things you're going to need. You'll need a soldering iron, uh, ideally a Dremel with a small drill bit so that you can actually drill through the back of your radio. I'm gonna try and do this in a way where it's easy to remove if I ever want to take it off. Uh, so the only thing that will be left will be two small holes that I could fill with black hot glue. And the only other thing you're going to need is one of these. Now this is a 12 by 12 millimeter uh, micro switch. It's designed for surface mounting and I'm going to hot glue it on the back of the radio, which is going to be perfect for this. Uh, this is the listing. So if you search for something like this, you can find the box. It was only about £10. I need some of these other switches for other projects so that's why I've kind of invested in the entire box although you can buy them in ones and twos which would be fine for this now I also would recommend that you have some side snips and your ohm meter or your multimeter handy just to make sure that you can test that everything is going to work fine now I'd make sure that you've got your gimbal protectors on and the usual stuff is remove the battery and also make sure that there's nothing else plugged in, there's nothing in the module bay. Uh, I've also put something nice and soft, uh, just a folded t-shirt down in front of the radio so that nothing is going to get scratched. There are six screws on the back of the radio, uh, two at the bottom, two in the middle and two at the top. You just need to take each of those out with a Phillips screwdriver and just keep them nice and safe. Once you've done that, then just unscrew the two shoulder pieces here on these particular switches, and then the back should just lift off, and it'll open like a book. Now, because I'm going to be messing out about with the back of the radio, and you can see here how much room there is around this momentary switch that where we can uh, add the extra pieces, that's where we need to put everything. You can see we're not going to struggle to get, uh, get it installed. Now normally I wouldn't undo the ribbon cables, but for this I actually will, uh, because we are going to be drilling and other things as well, and just want to make sure there's nothing in the way. So I've also tested the switch to find out which two contacts are closed uh, or have zero resistance when the button is pressed and I've cut off the other contacts that aren't going to be needed. On the back of the radio we now need to figure out where it's going to fit and just to mark where the holes are going to be needed. Because I'm going to stick it flush with a little bit of hot glue I'm just using a little sharpie pen just to see exactly where the two holes are that I'll need to use the Dremel for to open up two small holes that will go back in the radio. Now, making sure that there's nothing on the other side, let's just make sure that the, all the cables are well out of the way. I'm going to drill at quite an angle through the back of the case using a Dremel and a small bit so that those prongs can go in and then that means that the minimum amount of damage is done to the radio. So if I do decide to take this off, those are literally the only things that I've done to the radio that I can't do. So now with those two holes drilled, I can actually push those two pieces through. Now I did actually have to open up the holes just a little bit more with a very slightly bigger drill. And I'd recommend doing it this way. You want to keep the holes as small as possible, really, uh, just to stop things getting in the back of your radio. Just opening those up with the Dremel. Make sure that you're cleaning out all of the bits of plastic that fall through. And that means the switch will fit beautifully there. Great stuff. Right. 
Next job then is to add the wires onto the switch. So I just got hold of uh, two small wires from the spares bin, uh, doesn't matter on the colour, and soldered those onto the two contacts of the button. And then pushed those through those two holes that we've just made. So now we have the two flying leads. Now we're going to need to solder those onto the back of the switch, but first thing I'm going to do is just put a little blob of hot glue behind the switch and push that down. Uh, that is all that's needed to keep it in place. And once that has dry, just wipe that little bit off there. So it's, it's pretty neat when you've uh, finished doing it this way. Turn it over, I'm also going to just put a little bit of hot glue over where the cables come in for strain relief and also just to electrically cover uh, the little bit of bare connection that we have on the inside of the radio. Now the next job to do then is to find out which of the contacts I need to solder across for this button that's going to uh, close. Now checking here, it's the bottom two contacts on the switch, so it's the middle position and the bottom position that is open when the momentary switch is in the default sprung position and then when it is closed it goes to a zero resistance. So those are the two contacts that we need to solder this extra button across. Once that's done it's just a case of putting the radio back together and it is all the same steps but in reverse order. Now I would only put in a couple of screws here pop the battery in and make sure that it's working before you go and button everything up. So now all the screws are in, just tighten all of the shoulder pieces. Uh, again, if there's any fighting as you put the case back together, then stop and check that you haven't got any cables in the wrong places. And then the last job is to reinstall the battery and put the battery cover on. And now we're ready to test it. So let's remove the gimbal protectors, make sure the switches are in the default position and turn the radio on. That's promising, it's Welcome starting up. And then once it's all started, if I pull the momentary switch, there's my gun sound. Fantastic. And if I press the button on the back, that works the same way too. So it's either or with those two switches will now fire my gun. So that's all there is to it. It isn't particularly tricky if you have a spare 15, 20 minutes and a couple of tools, that's an easy one to do. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.